Hello and welcome everyone to the first episode of this Chess Endgame Tactics series. Uh, so here we have a position with white to move here. Uh, and so, you know, what should white do in this position? If you were playing this as white, what would you do here? So take some time to think about it. Uh, and pause the video if you need more time to think. Uh, but let's take a look here. All right. So if I turn on the evaluation, white is ahead in this position. And it looks like rook to c8 is the winning move here. Uh, so even after this rook to c8 move, though, uh, things can get a little bit tricky here. And I'll show you what happened in the game, uh, which ended up as a draw. Uh, but then we'll look and see what white should have done. So in the game, white played rook to c8. And so why is this a good move? Well, the obvious answer is uh, if the rook takes here, well then the pawn retakes and would promote to a queen and white would be winning. So that is one thing that uh, black must avoid. So if we go back to the beginning, so rook to c8. And the other option here uh, is, you know, white could just threaten to attack, capture this rook. After a recapture, um, the pawn could push forward, but this bishop would be able to sacrifice itself. And then after a recapture, it would be drawish here. Um, you know, white would recapture. The pawn would push forward protecting this f pawn, and you know, it'd be even material, uh, probably a draw with three pawns versus a bishop. Uh, let's see here. Um, and now the game continued here with uh, g4 to protect this pawn, and we see that that move uh, is not good for. <laughs> black here but uh, well first I'll go through and just show you how the game turned out so g4 was played then we had bishop to c5 attacking the rook here uh, and so this tactic is very interesting now you know what does the rook do um, g3 was played in the game with you know checking here uh, but then the king just moved over to e3, and then we had uh, g2 threatening the queen here. Uh, and in the game, rook takes f8 was played uh, with check, so the king was forced to move. And here, uh, a mistake was made. King to d2 was played. I guess white had a brain lapse or a, you know something here. He must have assumed or thought that his uh, that the black rook was still on f8 protecting this pawn. You know when he should have just captured this pawn, and then after this, bishop captures, and uh, you know here white would be winning this game because if the bishop would capture the bishop well then the pawn would promote um, if the king would capture the rook the bishop could capture and then you know this pawn would promote again there so uh, if we go back and see what happened in the rest of the game we had king to d2 well, this allowed the pawn to push forward, um, but we had a capture here. Then the queen, or the pawn pushes forward and queens. And so now to get rid of that queen, the rook is sacrificed, capture, bishop captures. 
Uh, the bishop moves back up here to block this pawn from promoting here. Uh, but then bishop to f2 to stop this pawn. Uh, here it was agreed to a draw in this game. Uh, but the game may continue you know, like this, where this uh, pawn is knocked out. But then this pawn will be stopped, uh, even if the bishops are traded. Um, you know, there's nothing that can be done here. The game would just be a draw. So let's go back and take a look at the beginning. You know, how white should have won this game. So rook to c8, the key move here, uh, because this rook once again cannot capture or the pawn would recapture and promote to a queen. So uh, next we had two options. The best two moves were king to f7 or king to g7. So we'll look at the best move first. King to f7. Um, this would allow bishop to b6. And the bishop from here will try and swing up and block out black's bishop taking control of this diagonal and threaten to push this pawn forward. Now a mistake that white must not make is uh, instead of going bishop to b6, he cannot just immediately go bishop to b8 or this is just captured and the rook cannot recapture or black's rook would capture the white rook here. So that must be avoided. So back to the beginning here we have the bishop swinging around preparing to go to c7 uh, and then rook 8 is possible. So if we go back uh, it looks like rook 8 is the best move here. Um, you know another option could be king to e7 uh, but then you know, we have this immediate check with the bishop here and just taking this. Uh, or the game could even go with this plan of blocking out the bishop continuing. And then if the king moves in, uh, we have rook captures, bishop captures. And then once the queen promotes, now the rook and king should be able to stop these pawns and it would be winning for white. The pawns could be picked off and uh, the king and rook should win. So if we go back and uh, take a look at this again. So king to f7, the bishop trying to remaneuver, uh, then rook to e8, the best move here. Uh, and now, uh, it looks like in response to rook to e8, um, oh, and one other thing besides rook to e8, um, we could look at this bishop to b8 again here, uh, but this would allow bishop to c7 if captures, rook captures, well, then the king would move over, but rook to c8 once again and this pawn would be able to promote so you know this is a common theme of being able to push the rook up here and block out the opponent's rook allowing your pawn to push forward and promote or if the rook captures your rook then the pawn would recapture with promotion so that is a tactic to, and I've seen that happen in my games. I've used it against people and I've actually lost against it, uh, against good opponents too. So you have to watch out for this tactic in the end game. All right, so let's go back to that. Um, so we'll go back to the beginning in case I uh, lost a few of you here. So at the very beginning, the rook to c8 move. And then uh, it looks like g4 was played in the game, and that was uh, not that great of a move. So our two options were, after rook to c8, the best move, according to the computer, is king to f7. 
but then bishop to b6 can be played with the idea of moving to c7 and blocking out this bishop. Uh, well, then we had rook to e8, uh, maybe threatening to move down here. Uh, but either way, black is already uh, in trouble here because of this far past pawn. All right, so next we have the bishop blocking out the other bishop. Well then, rook here checks the king, uh, but of course the king can just capture a pawn. And then after rook to b2 here, um, well, it's not looking too good for black um, because white can just push forward. Then the rook would have to capture, um, the bishop would capture, and then after g4, now we have uh, a rook versus two pawns. And the white king is helping to stop these pawns. Uh, so, you know, the king would move, attacking the bishop. Uh, and then what can the bishop do here? It's forced to just trade. So, you know, now we have uh, the rook versus the two pawns. And the king is in front of these pawns, so there's nothing that can be done, you know, especially after this move here. Uh, if the king tries to move in to help these pawns, well, then the rook can check from behind, and the king would be able to move up, and the pawns would just be picked off. So that is one of the variations that could happen. Uh, the computer also recommends after the very first move, rook to c8, instead of king to f7, uh, king to g7. And it looks like it's a toss-up. The evaluation moves back and forth between king to f7 and king to g7. So now it is saying king to g7 was the best move. Uh, so king to g7, but this is tricky here. Right now, it says that the only move that keeps white ahead is bishop to d4. So this is pretty interesting because if he followed up with his normal move, uh, bishop to b6, preparing to block out this bishop, well then uh, this allows rook to f7, preventing the bishop from moving up here to c7, uh, and then you know, maybe b8 would be played immediately. The bishop would capture, rook would capture. Uh, but then we have g4 moving down here and the pawns are protected. Uh, and then the king would try to stop them. But it would be uh, rook against rook and bishop against three connected pawns here. So... You know, according to the computer, that's a dead even draw evaluation here, uh, especially since the king is close enough here to help protect uh, this pawn in the rear here. And so it should be a draw. All right, so if we go back to this king to g7 move, and then it looks like bishop to d4 with check must be played to stay ahead, to keep white winning here. Uh, and then, you know, after king to f7, uh, we would have bishop to b6 now threatening to move back here. And uh, it looks like the computer recommends rook to e8 here. Uh, but then bishop to c7, bishop takes, rook takes, um, this position is showing white winning by a, a big margin here. So, you know, what does the computer recommend? Um, king to g6. But, you know, then we have this move once again. So, you know, black cannot do anything about this. The pawn will promote and... Uh, once he has a queen on the board, these three pawns will just be mowed down. <laughs> All right, so let's go back here. 
uh, and look at this from the beginning. After king to g7, bishop to d4 must be played if white wants to win. Uh, and then after king to f7, we have bishop back up to b6. And then um, bishop to b8 here, blocking the pawn. Uh, but now it looks like from this position, uh, Let's see. Well, before I get into the rest of that, there is one other move I wanted to look at. Instead of bishop to b8, if rook to e8 is played, well then bishop to c7, bishop captures, rook captures, king to g6, and once again rook to c8. So this common theme occurs, you know, over and over. So back to rook to, or sorry king to g7 bishop to d4 must be played then king to f7 bishop rem, uh, excuse me maneuvering back up to b6 to be able to swing over and block out the opponent's bishop so bishop to b8 trying to prevent the pawn from pushing forward uh, but now we have bishop to c7 attacking the bishop and bishop to a7. But now the pawn, um, let's see here. Uh, excuse me, I had put a lot of uh, evaluations in here and I just want to make sure I don't miss anything. So the computer here, another tricky move, the computer recommends king to f1 here as the only winning move. Um, if, well, before I look at king takes f3, let's look at what would happen um, if, well, if the pawn just pushed forward, then once again, the bishop could capture, bishop could capture, and then, oh, actually, the bishop could not capture because then the rook would capture. So, if the pawn pushes forward, oh, excuse me, what is it telling me here? Uh, okay, I see, we're in check here anyway. So, the king is in check, so the pawn cannot even push forward. So, king in check, uh, King to f1 must be played to win here. If king takes f3, well then this allows the king to move uh, with a discovered check. And then after king to e4, come on, king to e4. Then we have king to d7, uh, just running over here to help with everything. And then the game may continue with uh, rook captures, king captures, check, king moves, uh, but now we have this position here. And uh, this is pretty tricky. It should end in a draw according to the computer uh, because now we have king takes b7. Uh, and so uh, the game would continue here. Uh, could have an immediate draw with rook captures. And then once the recapture, the king could capture. Uh, if white tried to hold this, well, the bishop could just move back and forth. And so this should be a draw according to the computer here. Um, all right. So... I hope I haven't lost you in all that. Let's go back here to this position uh, where it looks like king to f1 is the only move that keeps white ahead here. And let's see why. After king to f1, um, f2 can be played. And let's see if that is the best move. Uh, it looks like the computer just recommends king to e7, uh, but let's take a look. If f2 were played, 
then here the rook moves over attacking the bishop and the pawns can move down here but after capture uh, anyway if this variation played out it looks like white is uh, you know really winning now they're plus 30 ahead in this situation so um, let me go back and we'll just run through uh, king to g7 one more time so check king moves bishop retreats this bishop blocks the pawn uh, but now we have an attack on the bishop the bishop retreats and then uh, here king to f1 the only move that can be played uh, in the game we looked at just pushing this pawn uh, but or sorry not in the game in the example that we were looking at here um, and let's take a look here so king to f1 and now the computer recommends king to e7 as the best move uh, so we could take a look at this but once again it looks like rook attacks the bishop uh, and then now what uh, king to d7 attacking the other bishop uh, and then i don't know now here let's see bishop to h2 is recommended just retreating uh, and i don't know here it's tricky the bishop must move uh, but if the bishop moves you know what are the options here uh, it looks like rook to d8 is recommended as the best move here so if the bishop moves bishop to b8 then of course this bishop could capture so we'll just look at the best move rook to d8 here and then it looks like you know this would allow rook to a captures on a7 uh, and then king to e6 so that's interesting i mean why wouldn't he well he can't move here because of this bishop so the extra bishop is controlling things so with that extra bishop uh white should be winning you know what can be done here um king to c6 this would allow the pawn to push immediately and be protected by this pawn uh, so the best computer recommended move is king to e6 uh, but you know what now now we have uh, rook to a1 if this is played for instance um, now what bishop to c7 attacking rook to g8 uh, and then finally you know this would happen again and so anyway another position where white should be winning here all right so let me go back to the very beginning make sure i didn't miss anything here so uh, rook to c8 was the best move to be played uh, and in the game we had g4 a mistake was played um, but after this bishop to c5 move was played then g3 king to e3 rook takes king moves to g7 and then uh, here was a tricky situation you know white should have just captured right here with king takes f3 and then if there was a promotion bishop captures and 
white would be winning here. So that's what should have played out instead of in the game uh, where a mistake was made and the game ended up being a draw. Well, I hope I didn't confuse you too much. I kind of dug into a lot of variations there. Uh, but that just shows how, you know, not only in the middle game and in openings can there be a lot of crazy tactics, but in the end game, especially when there are not many pieces left and you think, oh, it doesn't look too complicated, and then some interesting tactic occurs that surprises you out of nowhere. So you have to watch out for those tactics and study, you know, tactics in all phases of the game. All right, well, uh, this video has gone on for quite a bit, so if you've enjoyed it, please like and subscribe if you haven't already. Feel free to leave comments or suggestions, and uh, hopefully I'll do some more episodes of these chess endgame tactics. Thank you, everybody, and have a great day.